today's video, I really want to stop and take some time to talk to you guys at home about some of my thoughts on not necessarily the fine detail and the how and the why and the who and the what of Ukraine, but how it's affected me, how it's likely to be affecting you and what I'm doing about it. It's everywhere you go, it's every channel you turn it onto because it is, it's affecting the whole world. You know, it is a massive, massive thing that's happening right now. Before we get bogged down into the, the co you know, the comments box and the real fine detail of just how horrific and who's doing what, where and what's media propaganda and what's not, let's just focus in on ourselves. So I think I might stop up here on this lovely big hill. I always find that coming out to these sorts of places with epic views often gives me perspective, literally and metaphorically. Your eye never quite falls on any one place and it just allows your mind, it goes hand in hand with your mind to wander from thought to thought. So, obviously for the last couple of weeks, everything you see and hear has been about pretty much one narrative and it's all been about Russia invading Ukraine. It's had huge knock-on effects, obviously politically, economically, in every which way you can think of. And we're yet to feel the effects of the lack of wheat that's gonna hit the markets in autumn, uh, sunflower oil, all of those things that the Ukraine, being the breadbasket of Europe, produces, which quite frankly probably isn't gonna happen this year. There's more kind of direct impact for us as a result of that. But what I'm going to talk to you today is the cost of you lapping up the media at the rate in which we are. And it's not your fault. Remember, your brain is hardwired to seek out and try to absorb any knowledge which you feel may be pertinent to your survival. Think about a time where, before the world of instant water and hot and taps, we would have to go down to the river to collect water. It's a well-known story. I may find a crocodile down by the river. I will then come back and tell everyone in my family immediately, this is important information I must hold in my head. There's danger down by the river, don't go down there. Somebody will run to the next family unit and the next family unit and from tribe to tribe, this knowledge, this information, this sometimes gossip, will spread like wildfire, especially in small communities, we still see it today, except for now, we have the world's media. And the world's media will offer anything you want to see or learn about or know about on a plate. YouTube is a fantastic platform to learn from. It is also a fantastic platform to continue to feed yourself. Perhaps the things aren't necessarily quite so good for you. So we have a habit in this very old primal part of our brain in the amygdala, okay, the emotional control sensor, wants to prioritize the things we feel are pertinent to us. As somebody who has personally endured enough trauma for a lifetime for myself, thank you, do I need to wake up in the morning and the very first thing I do is roll out of bed, turn on my phone, straight into the blue light and give myself a big dose of caution. Click here to see this image because it's been censored because there's something in here which is violent or disturbing. What's the first thing my brain wants to do? Click. Boom, straight away I'm seeing a hospital that's been bombed. I'm seeing broken, shattered bodies of children and people caught up in the, in the fighting. And then I'm seeing the narrative underneath, the how and the why, which may or may not be always absolutely spot on. But that doesn't matter, you've clicked on it. This is not an attack on journalism because journalism brings us the news. We wouldn't know about a lot of things around the world if it wasn't for that. What I'm trying to get at is you as an individual have to make a choice. How much of that do you want to continually expose yourself to? We have a habit of dialing in on that thing that we've maybe been through before. I'll put, I'll put my hand up now and say it wasn't too long ago a time where I would catch myself going on a, on a wormhole looking at helmet cam, up, up front helmet cam fighting because part of me was craving the buzz and the rush and wanted to go back and look at that and feel it and have the sound turned up and go through it. Was it doing me any good? No, because all it would do is I'd find myself adrenally fatigued at the end of the day. Whereas what I could have perhaps done was started my day rolling out of bed, having a glass of water, starting slowly, 
starting with my thoughts, maybe do a bit of journaling. And what I'm doing, guys, is I'm focusing on the five feet in front of me because they're the only things I have really any control over, okay? Did I get the shopping? Did I remember the milk, the bread? Have I thought this through? Have I picked up Finn from preschool? Have I, have I managed to successfully, not only adult, but parent? Okay, they are my priorities. Then I have work, okay, in order to earn money. I can't focus on the fact that these terrible things are happening around, around the world because it's not just Russia and Ukraine. Every single day, bad stuff happens in this world, guys. But remember, every single day, also, you might get a seven-year-old girl save her five-year-old brother from a house fire. And you very, very occasionally get to hear about that stuff. But that stuff's also happening. There's a lot of good happening in this world. And it's what you choose to focus on and what the seeker seeks the finder will find. Be wary of that. You can come away feeling very second best to watching too much of one thing. What I'd like us to talk about now, and I'd like you to leave comments in the box below, is some of the management techniques that you've put into play so that you don't catch yourself in this downward spiral wormhole of just negativity, negativity, negativity. For me, step one, get outside. The fact the sun is shining here in the UK is a big thing. Step two, get somewhere that lends perspective. Well, it's physical, it's metaphorical. I could just sit there and just look at this skyline and totally zone out for five, 10 minutes and just let my brain go wherever it wants to go. I mentioned journaling. Well, why journal? Journaling's important because when you've got a lovely little notepad that's just for you and it's you and your thoughts, it's kind of like a diary in some ways in that it's a regular entry that you're gonna put in there. I tend to generally just use it as like a, for, for making lists for things I need to achieve the next day and then maybe put notes on there as to how I'm gonna do it. But you could equally put down on there how you're feeling and make a note of it. You may even notice over a series of months you start to see a pattern. It definitely does help to get that on paper out of your head so it's held there and not, your brain's not constantly trying to hold all this information and then the next morning you wake up just check your journal ah right I need to do this this and this okay cool those are my aims for the day allow yourself to feel the emotions you're going through if you're feeling awful you have to kind of weather the storm in the same way that I would put my hood up do that British stiff upper lip thing and get on with it I would have a, a, a plan of action to to overcome feeling particularly sensitive to, to whatever's going on around me that day. Take some time out, look at your list of essential stuff you have to do, look at the stuff that you need to do, and look at the stuff that maybe you don't have to do immediately and start to start to prioritize things into, into different categories. Because it's very easy to, to get set focused on, on maybe the wrong things. Guys, if you need to cry, I'm saying this as a raw marine. I'm saying this as a, a blokey bloke in the outdoors. Do it, like cry, let it out. It's a, it's a natural emotion. All that happens when you bottle stuff up is it's just gonna build and build and build in pressure, okay? There's not a human alive that isn't susceptible to going bang badly. With that in mind, just be careful of how much you expose yourself to the news and media around certain subjects and certain things that are happening in the world right now. One of the things I like to do, I quite like to carve. Green woodworking for me is a, is a fantastic thing. Just the act of having a small pen knife in your pocket, maybe making a spoon or a bowl or something, but just totally lost in the pursuit of one single act, a small fiddly task, whether it's knitting, whether it's whatever it is you're into, okay? So a hobby, something you, you love to do. And because you've got the muscle memory there, you just switch off and you just get lost into this little meditative state where again, your brain can just ping pong around any ideas that are in your head and start to put things away into, into a place where you can start to make sense of things. For me, if I have to have the phone on or, or the laptop or have some kind of background noise going on, I quite like to listen to TED Talks. You know, there's really positive 18 minute chats from some neuro expert telling you about how your brain works for instance because i do find them empowering i'm not necessarily looking at the screen i've got the, the laptop turned around and it's on the worktop there and i'm i'm in the kitchen carving something i'm doing things on my terms and i go to bed with that 
that neocortex, that front part of your brain, that problem solver, fired up really well. And I tend to sleep fantastically. Now sleep is probably the single most important thing that I would say when I'm struggling makes the biggest difference to me getting back into the game. For me to do that, I need to have a good sleep hygiene routine. And what does that look like? That looks like me having a shower before bed, having a good stretch off, making sure that I'm kind of nimble and, and, and limbered up, making sure I read a book before bed and my eyes are moving left to right on that page, stimulating that, that neocortex once again, that problem solver. If I have been maybe watching the six o'clock news uh, and got caught out, because I'm only human and I've just watched a load of Ukraine based stuff, it's gonna fire up the old part of me. And I might even have a few nightmares or I might go through some sleep paralysis or some kind of stuff there where it's gonna really dis disturb me for a while. I've been making this video now for about 30 minutes. When I came out, I was slightly stressed at the thought of having to talk to the camera. I'm sitting out here on this hill, has pretty much done exactly what I wanted it to do. I feel, I feel calm in myself now. If you are someone who's really struggling, maybe you've served in the armed forces, maybe you are a veteran, maybe, maybe you've got PTSD from something completely different, but your seesaw is still just as sensitive as anyone else's. We're all only human. It doesn't matter what the mechanism was for you to get to that point. What matters is how you act and how you manage yourself moving forward. When you are out there trying to get this perspective or taking some time out or having a bath and lighting a candle or whatever it is you do to just shut the world away and reboot your brain, get away from your devices and your phone, in that time, think about the way you talk to yourself. When you go out the door for the third time because you've forgotten something once again and you realize you get to the car and you've left the car key back in the kitchen, do you say, oh, and swear at yourself. Instead, try to catch yourself in the moment, and say, no, I'm not, I'm just really tired. Just call it for what it is. It's so easy for these things to creep into our life. You know, we're, we're addicted to sugar, we're addicted to caffeine, we're addicted to media. <laughs> it's, it's all three of these things are not really fantastic for, for leading a, a pretty chilled life. Whilst we live in our, our wonderful bubble of hot water, instant central heating and all the rest of it, know that what you're seeing on the screens there is people who are having that taken from them in the blink of an eye. So if you could be anything guys, just be kind. So I'll leave that thought with you. But um, hopefully some of my words today have resonated with some of you. Thanks for joining me out on the hillside today. I'll see you guys again soon and I'll see you back in the woods. Mm -hmm.